Hello, my name is Marco Alexander and I write books about the ball gate or about how to walk through the forefoot. In this video I would like to introduce the heel gate and the ball gate and to explain and show the differences. Over hundred thousands of years throughout evolution, man wandered the nature as hunter-gatherers and they always did so on stony and on uneven ground and they walked through the forefoot. Shoes that allow the heel gait without pain have only been around for a few thousand years. That's not enough time for evolution and for nature to adapt to it. Here I would like to show you two ways of walking once in this week. First, the heel gait in shoes and second, the ball gait in shoes. And then again, both ways of walking barefoot. Here you can see a model of the foot without fascia. 26 of the 206 bones of the whole body are in each foot. So 25% of all bones are located within our feet. Similar to our hands, which have 27 bones, the feet are also a masterpiece of nature. The best engineers and technicians on this planet could have not developed them better. In the media, you often hear that the foot should roll when walking, but for rolling, it should be convexly shaped. But the foot is concave and something concave cannot roll. Here's another picture of the concave foot. 99.9% .9 of population currently plays and roll their foot when walking in the heel gate. The full body weight is rammed into the ground, which every step unprotected like a hammer. With 220 million steps that a person takes in a lifetime, on average, this is quite a strain on the body. Please do the test yourself and cover your ears and then walk in heels with shoes or barefoot on a hard surface. You can hear the bang sound well when the heel is wrapped into the ground with full body weight, with or without shoes. With the ball gait, on the other hand, the weight of the person is gently cushioned by the bones and the fascia when the foot is placed on the ground. The kinetic energy is absorbed when the foot touches down and released again when the foot leaves the ground. This makes walking nice and smooth. When walking on heels, it is noticeable that the step width is artificially extended also due to the heel elevation. This has a negative effect on the connective tissue on the pelvic floor. With the ball gait, the steps are shorter and more supple. The pelvic floor is relieved. Here again, comparison additionally simulated with the models. With 220 million steps in a human lifetime at an average human weight of seven kilograms, that is 10 million tons, which is equivalent to the weight of both the Egyptian pyramids. This stress caused by the heel gait simply must have negative effects in the long term. The 
Ball gate, on the other hand, can have a number of positive effects to the human body. It can improve problems with the hips, the bones and joints, it can improve back pain, the vision and many others. For men, also the sexual potency and for women, pregnancies. You can once imagine how a pregnant woman and her unborn child in the womb must feel like. With each step of the mother in the heel gate, the body and the head of the child is pushed down into the pelvic floor and it has to cramp up to make up for it. After the fifth month of the pregnancy, when the hearing of the child is also developed, the child not only feels these uh, stress, it also hears the boom, boom noise with every step that the mother takes in the gate. On the other hand, by walking through the forefoot, both the, uh, the weight of the child and the weight of the mother are uh, elastically cushioned with every step that the mother would take in ball gait. And this would make a pregnancy much easier. Now I'm going to show you how to do the ball gait, which means walking through the forefoot. You stand upright with your head lifted and your chest out and both your feet stand parallel to each other. Your feet are positioned as if your heel and your big toe are on an imaginary line pointing 90 degrees forward. Your feet are set parallel to, to each other like this but the distance between your feet uh, is different for everyone and depends on your statue and your posture. The distance will automatically settle later when walking through the forefoot. To walk, the upper body now slowly moves forward. To maintain balance, one foot now lifts the heel, then also the ball of the foot and then sets it down again a little further forward. Just before the foot touches the ground, the rear foot now also lifts the heel. The step width should be comfortable. The front foot now touches down on the outer ball of the foot. Afterwards, with the entire forefoot, including the toes, as explained earlier in the picture. The rear foot now forms an angle, with the ball of the foot and the toes still touching the ground. At this moment, the body axis from the head is between the two feet resting on the ball of the foot. In further movement, the heel of the front foot lowers until the whole weight rests on the ground. Then the body axis up to the head is exactly above this foot. At the same moment, the back foot still touches the ground with the toes. This further gives stability to the walking movement. Only when the weight is shifted further forward does the rear foot leave the ground completely, is guided forward and the movement begins again. The movement is completed by swinging the arms in opposite directions. The right arm swings with the left foot and the left arm with the right. Fine tuning the gait is important. To do this, you need to close your ears again and again and listen to the walking noise. If the boom noise is still clearly audible in the ball gate, then you do not place the foot from high enough and the heel is still partially rammed into the ground because the ball, the bones and the fascia and the muscles do not have enough time to sufficiently absorb the kinetic energy. Only when the walking nose is coherent and the boom 
can hardly be heard anymore, then the ball gate is correctly set. Here are the two types of touchdown in the example. First, the ball, which acts like a spring, does not have enough time to absorb the energy. While in the second, the kinetic energy can be absorbed sufficiently. This strengthens the muscles and trains and promotes overall success. Don't worry if you're not doing it exactly the way I have shown it to you. Everybody is a little different. Just stick to the principle and after a few thousand steps, the body will automatically fall into the way evolution wanted it to walk. The change to ball gate is free and natural, but it will cost you the necessary effort to make the change in your lifestyle. It has to be done as consequently as possible, because only then the fascia chain can realign itself fundamentally. Maybe you still have doubts after this video, because, hey, all the world walks in heel gate. These doubts are justified. The heel gate is a very dominant and powerful gate. Here's an example from history. The North American Indians and the Australian Aborigines, who both walked in ball gate, either with minimal shoes or barefoot, were almost completely wiped out by soldiers, cowboys, and white settlers wearing boots with heel elevation walking the heel gate. The heel gate is also more economically because of the wider step width that can be bridged with every step, especially the higher the heel elevations. The negative symptoms of this step width caused by the body's impact are now clear. There are a lot of videos and pages on the internet that support the heel gate walking because it protects the small bones and the weak body parts in our feet. If they needed protection, evolution would have taken care of that, or wouldn't it? By the same logic, we should all wear constantly tight gloves to protect the bones and weaker body parts in our hand during our daily use. So I'm going to ask you one last time so that you are going to change into the ball gate consistently and consequently. It's natural and it's free. Let yourself be convinced of the positive effect. You got nothing to lose. Change now, but do it consequently everywhere, at home, in the office, or in leisure time. I get Thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, I appreciate a thumb up. And if you want, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will regularly post videos about this topic and other topics uh, of my books. Thank you for your interest and all the best for you. Many greetings, yours, Marco Alexander.